the Kanban view in monday.com. In this video, I'm gonna be explaining what it is and how to set it up for your system so you can go ahead and use its functionality. Just before I get into the video, if you need any help setting up monday.com for your business or you need any training, please check out the link below. We would be delighted to help. So as you can see here, I am inside of our monday.com system. Now this is just an example, uh, example workspace, an example board, but obviously your data is gonna look very, very different. The first thing we're going to want to do in order to use the Kanban view is go to the main table area up top here and just press the plus button just on the right hand side of it. And as you can see here, we have a list of options. Now these do often change. So if you cannot see the Kanban view here already, just press more views and you can scroll through all of the different options. But I'd recommend obviously given the, given the title of this video, going for the Kanban view option, which is down at the bottom here at the moment, this is where it's positioned. Um, press open in board. And as you can see, a Kanban view will populate. Now, if you've never seen one of these before, essentially it's broken down by stages in line format. And it's really, really good for sales processes, lead processes, um, onboarding. We've used it for a whole host of different reasons. It may seem really simple, but that's kind of the beauty of it. It keeps things easy to manage and is more visually appealing and uh, comprehensible than it is to use it in the standard main table view, which is not too dissimilar from, as I'm sure you know, an Excel spreadsheet or something along those lines. So the first thing that I'm going to want to show you is the ability to reposition the actual stages themselves and the positioning of these. Now, Kanban view is based on an actual status column, which I'll come on to in a moment's time. But sometimes if you're adjusting that status column, the Kanban view will not always reflect the repositioning of those different status options. So you can drag and drop and reposition these different stages accordingly. But what I'm going to first you're going to go back and do is go to our main table. I'll change this. So let's just say we add another label. So example label. Um, hypothetically, let's say this is a sales stage. Just just because or just a sales process, let's say just just for context, just to give you an example. You can see here that that is being repositioned to the end. Let's say the green is closed one, the red is closed last, and I want to move this to like, let's say this is just contacted. I don't know. It could be anything, but just give you an idea. You can reposition it accordingly. Now, in order to actually make changes to the Kanban view, what you want to do is go to the far right hand side and you're looking for a cog and that is the settings area of the Kanban view. So go ahead and select that option. And when you can see here, we've got a load of different options on the right hand side. So firstly, this is going to ask which status we want to use the Kanban view for. Let's say you have like seven or eight or 10 or 20 or 100 status columns on your, actually, on your actual board inside of monday.com. You need to tell the Kanban view which one of those status columns you would like to use for the different processes or the different stages. Because if you've got loads of different status columns and they've all got different stages, the Kanban view is only gonna be applicable to one, okay? So that's where you firstly wanna select that option. As you can see here, I've only got one status column, but just to give you an example, which I'm sure you guys are already familiar with what I'm trying to say, aware of what I'm trying to say, if you add a secondary status column, you now have two status options. But also do bear in mind, this is only gonna be applicable for a status column. This will not work for a drop down menu. This will not work for anything else but a status column. Now card columns are what is actually on the main table itself. So if I go again back to the main table, we've got all of these different columns here. What this is asking is which parts of that data do you wanna see? So if we select everything or select all columns for this board, that will tick every single option. But let's hypothetically say we do not need to see the group. We can just untick that option and that will hide it. Super, super simple, okay? And then once you have that, we have this divide by option, which is really helpful. So let's say you wanna divide it by group or you can divide it by status as well, uh, by another status column, an alternative status column. You can do so. Uh, it's entirely up to you what you want to do. A lot of the time, the status column, or for us and our clients, the status column will also reflect the group that they're in. So let's say it's a status for a sales process. If it's new, they'll sit in the new group and the status will be equal to new. When the status changes from new to contacted, they'll move to the group contacted automatically using automation. So I, I mean, there's definitely use case for the divide by. It's entirely up to you if you want to use it or not. You can also hide empty groups if you'd like to. If, it's, if there are groups that are not being used, you can do that as well. So I'm not going to go through that, but hopefully that gives you an example. You've got cover columns. So that will show you the cover of uh, an item by the files that have been uploaded. Uh, I have not got any files uploaded, but you can experiment with that if you'd like to. Um, if you do use that, you have got the crop and fit. So 
it may take up loads of space on the page so you can crop it and fit it accordingly if you've got like the but the reason they are giving you this option is so you can see a photo and immediately identify that that is the item that you want and it will show you the photo and then you can crop it as, and fit it as opposed to actually reading the name but there are instances where that will be applicable and where it won't be applicable so now you set up your kanban view it's super super simple all you need to do is just drag and drop through the different stages and you can adjust accordingly and if i go ahead back to the main table and add a secondary example task so example task number two add that as a new item and then go back to the kanban view you can see here that that has now been populated and again you can drag and drop that across and you can reposition it accordingly wherever you want you can also add an item from the actual kanban view itself just by pressing the plus button there and that will populate and i can call this example task number three now you can i'm sure see why they give you the option to hide and show certain data points because if you obviously have three on one view or one stage that's going to take up a lot of room if you've got like 30 or 40 columns and you want to see them all that's going to take up loads of space so again you could go to the cog and let's say i want to hide the date the text the files the status number one that reduces the amount of space each item is going to take up on your kanban view and again you can continue to drag and drop it and like you can see here the status adjusts accordingly which i think is pretty cool as well um, so you can see here it's changed and again it's changed as well uh, you can interact with this so you can click into it and that will give you additional information about the item so that will show you all of the columns that have been hidden from the actual view but you can click in and see the information you can write updates see this see the files see the activity log as well um, you are also able to select the dotted button on the right hand side and you've got the standard options as well so you can add a sub item you can archive you can delete so you've got a lot of the functionality that you would from the main table in the Kanban view. Now the final thing that I want to show you is you have these options here. You've got the search option. You can filter by person so you can see the items that have been assigned by person. You've got the advanced filter and standard filter as well so you can filter by other aspects of the data in the main table area. You can switch to the advanced filters. So let's say where a person is equal to or where status is equal to working on it and then you can go ahead and press save to this view and that will show you only the um, the items that are equal to this view but this is base functionality that you get across the entirety of monday.com so this is not at all unique to the kanban view but hopefully this has helped out just to give you an example of a use case like i said sales process lead management process onboarding process project management as well these there are loads of instances where the Kanban view might be applicable and it's a definitely more user-friendly way of managing items or you might visually prefer this view to another view. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has been helpful and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.